Jews are one of the most smartest money managers and wealth creators that we have in the world. And we often have heard that whatever a Jew touches, it prospers. Simply put, they have the Midas touch. A simple, practical approach from the Jews captured my attention and imagination. It's about what the Jews teach their children about money. Welcome to the Wealth Nation Podcast, a podcast for every mother, daughter, grandmother, sister, and wife, and the men who are smart enough to tune in. The Wealth Nation Podcast brings you all you need to know about investments, business, property investments, personal finance, and all-around financial wellness. Here is your host, Yolanda Rose. Hello, and welcome to an- another episode of the Wealth Nation Podcast. I am Yolanda financial advisor and wealth coach, and it is my goal to put together content tips and strategies that you can use to manage your money well and to build generational wealth. So if you're new to the podcast, please subscribe. And if you're a long-time listener, I would really appreciate it if you could leave me an honest review on Facebook, on iTunes, on what you really think about the content that we put out on the Wealth Nation podcast. The Wealth Nation podcast is sponsored by Audible. Audible is a seller and producer of spoken audio entertainment, information, and educational programming on the internet. Audible sells digital audiobooks, radio and TV programs, and audio versions of magazines and newspapers. For a 30-day free trial of Audible, go to www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com forward slash Audible. So we started talking about financial terms last week, and we spoke about the GDP the gross domestic product, which you said was the the country's ability to produce goods and service for a specific period of time. So this week, we're looking at the debt to GDP ratio definition, uh, what that means, what's it for South Africa, and basically how it impacts us. So the debt to GDP ratio is a measure comparing a country's public debt to its GDP. So we're comparing what the country owes to what it produces. The debt to GDP ratio is usually a good indicator of a country's ability to pay back its debt. So you often find it expressed as a percentage. So a country is able to continue paying interest on its debts without refinancing and without hampering economic growth is generally considered stable. A country with a high debt to GDP ratio typically has trouble paying off external debts or the public debts, which are any balances owed to outside lenders. So in such cases, these creditors are apt to seek higher interest rates when lending. Extravagantly high debt to GDP ratios may deter creditors from lending money altogether. So what does the GD, uh, the debt to GDP ratio tell you? Firstly, it tells us when a country defaults on its debt, it often triggers financial panic in the domestic and international markets alike. So as a rule, the higher a country's debt to GDP ratio climbs, the higher its risk for default becomes. So although governments around the world, they may strive to lower their debt to GDP ratios, it can be very difficult to achieve during periods of unrest, such as wartime, economic recession, and In such challenging climates, governments tend to increase borrowing in effort to stimulate growth and boost demand. And we see this happening in South Africa right now. Our our debt to GDP ratio is extremely high. We've been hit massively with COVID. Even without COVID, we were, (laughs) the stuff was hitting the fan. And we've been borrowing. We've we've borrowed um, a lot. And there's more borrowing to come because as a country, we cannot manage. So according to the World Bank, countries whose debt to GDP ratios that exceed 77% for prolonged periods experience significant snow, uh, slowdowns in economic growth. So every percentage point of debt above this level costs countries about 1.7% in economic growth. And this phenomenon is even more pronounced in emerging markets like South Africa, where an additional percentage point of debt over 64% annually grows at around 2%. So let's look at South Africa's debt to income rate, uh, debt to GDP ratio. So South Africa's debt levels will exceed 100% of GDP by 2024 to 2025, and the rise in almost 114% by 2028, according to a document uh, that 
our finance minister, Tito Imboweni, uh, has presented. The finance minister says that debt will rise to 80.5% of the GDP in this year, 2020, compared with a projection of 65.6% in February of this year. So the tra- trajectory presents shows no sign of stabilizing by 2028. And the finance minister did present, after he presented this report, he then brought out uh, the plans of the 500 billion stimulus package, which um, we're still looking for, apparently. You now understand what the debt to GDP ratio is. You now understand as a country that we are not in a good shape. And effectively, that slows down our economy. It slows down growth. It hampers growth. Um, less investment comes into the country, the costs for borrowing are higher. So if the costs for borrowing uh, as a country level, if the costs of borrowing are higher, the likelihood of tax increases comes in. So with our already shrinking tax base, uh, more people losing their jobs, the ones that do have jobs most likely are going to be forced to pay more taxes, uh, maybe a VAT increase. Government will have to find various ways with the economic slowdown to start raising revenue to pay back the debt. So the quickest way for, to government, for government to raise revenue is, other than borrowing is to hit us with taxes. Because our tax base is shrinking, it could lead us in a world of trouble. So the next five years is critically important for South Africa. Raising financially savvy children involves teaching them a variety of skills, from budgeting to planning to earning and saving. Besides giving them an understanding of the value of a rand, it prepares them for real-world finances. Financial literacy is a vital skill, and it is never too early to teach your kids about money. Many parents wonder how they can teach their kids about money and where to find age-appropriate resources. You can now purchase the Financial Literacy for Kids workbook, which is aimed at primary school kids. It's now available at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com. This workbook provides you with 12 lessons, activities, lesson plans, discussion points, and quizzes that you can use to test your kids' knowledge. Shop now at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com. And don't forget to sign up for our free masterclass that happens next week. It's all about how you can raise financially savvy kids. So link us, uh, link up with us. Check the link in the show notes of this episode and also visit our website, www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com and you will be uh, directed to that link to the webinar registration where you can register and join us on that free masterclass to learn on how you can better raise financially savvy kids. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Tuned In. Now back to the show. All right, so that's enough of the horror stories for today. Let's just uh, talk about something a little bit more, a little bit more pleasing. So today we're talking about what Jewish parents teach their children about money. And the thing is, with the Jewish parents, they start teaching their kids about money as soon as they know how to talk. They fully understand Uh, the biblical principle that says, teach a child the way of the Lord, and when he grows, he will not depart from it. So they teach their children about money when they are young, and this is part and parcel of their culture. Children have a teachable spirit. They're good listeners, and they are excited about learning new things. So to train train a child to be wise with money, Jews use five jars, and each jar is specifically labeled uh, and has an opening at the top. So the jars are labeled tithe, giving and offering, saving, investing and spending. Now, if you have a copy of my book, Financial Literacy for Kids, I do speak about the the three jars method. Well, the Jews have the five jars method of tithing, giving and offering, saving, investing and spending, where I mention uh, the giving and tithing jar and one, the saving jar and the spending jar. So every time a child is given 10 shekels, that's the Israeli currency, a child is expected to put one shekel in the tithe jar, another shekel in the giving and offering jar, another shekel in the savings jar, two shekels in the investing jar, and the last spending jar receives the remaining five shekels. So a child is then expected to open the giving jar only on Sundays, while the the tithe jar is open on month end. 
The savings jar is open on special occasion like um, family emergencies, sickness or something like that. The investing jar is open when it's full. The, the child takes full charge of deciding when and where to invest the money um, he or she accumulates. The parents don't intervene even when the child is making a mistake. They let them learn from their failures. So after all, failure is a good teacher. So this way, children learn to become creative in decision making. And most of all, it takes responsibility for their own decisions. So research shows that the most difficult part of our lives is dealing with money. And when you get this part right, all other areas of your life is relatively easy to deal with. And Jewish kids grow up with a high sense of responsibility and experience more uh, satisfaction and success than a lot of their peers. For instance, the divorce rate in the Jewish American families is 90% less than the rate experience in other American families. So even as many struggle with, with debt, Jews continue to thrive in their business and personal finances as well. So what happens for you and me who are not lucky enough to have undergone these transformative lessons in our early lives? Well, first, you've got to make deliberate plans to train your children. This is one of the best investments that you can ever make to your children. So I highly suggest that you join us on our free How to Raise Money Savvy Kids webinar that's happening this week. Go to our website, www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com, and uh, you'll be directed to the link where you can sign up to that free training. Also, message us on our pages all our social media platforms, and one of the admins will assist you to getting you to that webinar on how you can raise money savvy kids. So in conclusion, King Solomon, the wise one, the wisest man in the world, said in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 2, rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. You may, so you may be struggling right now with debt. Your business may be down. Your promotion may be overdue. But you have all that it takes and the Lord is on your side to raise you out of your current predicament to enjoy a life of abundance. All right, so that's it for me on this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. I hope to catch you in the webinars happening this week. Um, it's going to be a busy week. Tons of webinars happening. So grab that free training where I'm going to be showing you the three, uh, the three point framework that I use to teach my kids about money. So Catch you inside the webinar. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to visit our website at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com and sign up for our free investment masterclass.